Hi guys and welcome back to the show. My name is Admiral Pegasus and on today's show we are going to be talking about the new Hostiles that was dropped in the month of April 2024. Yes, it is the Gaunt Hostiles. Now, as you can see, I do have a ship on my way out there to actually show these ships off. But basically what we're going to be covering today is pretty much most of what was covered in the patch notes. But hopefully we're just going to go in that little bit deeper and just cover things rather than just say, you know what, this, this, this and this. But we're just going to give you a little bit more of a, an explanation and add a little bit extra to it. So I hope you do enjoy the video. But before we do get into all that, if you do actually like the videos, please consider the, smashing the thumbs up button, which really does help the videos, um, the analytics for the video, and also subscribe to the channel if you have not. But until then, let's crack on. So... April 2024 saw the introduction of the new hostiles, the Gorn. Um, um, yeah, I, I can't remember the blunt, how I can't pronounce it. It begins with H. Hemogeny or something like that. Um, now, this was a new species brought in, um, and the inspiration around the ship's design and everything came from Star Trek Strange New World Seasons 1 and 2. Now, for those of you who have kept up with Star Trek um, Strange New Worlds, Season 1 obviously saw the introduction of the Gorn. Obviously, we know about the Gorn from Kirk's time. But obviously, over the years, they've sort of like evolved. I mean, what was it? It was literally a bipedaled, um, reptilian-looking, human-shaped Gorn in the time of the, uh, the original series. And then when it came to... Um, Star Trek Enterprise, when we next saw the Gorn, actually saw the Gorn on screen, they were more reptilian, CGI-based, and yeah, they were they were more like long-necked and everything. Now, obviously, we see them again here in, in Strange New Worlds, where we've seen them in both seasons one and two, and they mo look similar um, to the aliens from Aliens, realistically. Um... Sort of like, um, yeah, faces was pretty much as similar to what we're used to, but also long tails and and they're running more like um, quadrupeds rather than bipedal um, creatures. But so yeah, so and then the ship's designs were taken sh straight out of um, Strange New Worlds because it's the only time we've ever actually seen the um, Gorn ships. Unless, of course, you've played the game Star Trek Starfleet Command, yeah, the old PC game, in which case they obviously had a few ships in there. But, that was, but the first canon line was Strange New Worlds. So... Now, these ships do come with um, unique abilities, which we'll go into in just a minute. But let's quickly cover where we're actually going to find them. So, first of all, the G4 section here, just to the left of Rom G4 Romulan space. It's actually sort of like um, sort of like in the middle, sort of um, east and south at the same time. So, and it's right next to some um, swarm space, so, uh, the Borg Solo Armadas. So... Yeah, I mean, the closest system that you could probably consider is you've got the Singularity um, APAC system, and you've also got the um, central system of um, Talvath, the level 43 system. So that's where the first batch is. Now, the second batch is G5, which is right to the um, east side of G5 Federation space. And obviously, these make up another, another four systems, with number 51 topping out at level 60. And obviously, as you can see, they're literally um, close to um, Gary F and, um, what was that, uh, Sainjurin or something like that, something like that. But it's next to G5 Federation Space. Now, there is some for the G6 as well. And if we go right here, it's literally to the um, sort of northwest west side of Federation G6 Space. But as well, there's a lot of neutral systems here, and it is all G6. So either way, to gain access to it, unfortunately, you are actually going to need to be Op 61. It's the only way you're going to gain access to these things. Now, they are extremely powerful as well, so just to mention that little bit. But what we can do is we can actually call up one of these ships and actually have a look at their um, abilities. 
Now they do have multiple abilities and I did show this off in the patch note video. So just quickly covering then. So the first bit is they can only take isolated damage. Um, and obviously the ball cutting beam can affect them. Now the, the way you're going to know that's happening is this symbol right here, which is the ablative shield. Now obviously you use, use uh, for those of you who have used the ball cube and you have to two shot a single target with a ball cube just to actually kill it. You obviously get this ablative shield. Now we did quickly look at the uh, mass about how many, um, how long this nineteen thousand day, this nearly twenty thousand days is. Obviously, it's fifty four and a half years. So obviously, if the game lasts that long, yes, you got to get the chance to use the ball cutting beam against it. And let's go. We actually remember by then, depending on who's in game design, who's in engineering, whatever. By then. So, I mean, I'm nearly 40, so 54 years from now, I'll be 94. Okay, I'll be 94 years old. So, yeah, that's a long ass time. And that's if I'm actually still alive. I hope to God I am. Touch wood, I'll, I'll still be alive. But, yeah, they actually put a date on it, really. But, anyway, um, now the next ability is going to be this one, which is Isolated Mall, increasing their own isolated damage by 100%. So just watch out for that one, and also include increasing their piercing stats as well by 500%. So potentially a couple of officers you want to be looking at is ones that maybe got like isolated defense and also reducing piercing stats of your opponents. So there be kind of the officers that you'll be looking at. Now, I do have a couple of crew um, loadouts that I do want to point out. And obviously, we're not going to send a ship in because my primary ship is actually out waiting for me to do a mine. It's been sat out there for a few hours, actually. But luckily, just for you guys, I actually did a grinding session. Now, I'm predominantly aiming straight at the Explorers. And this is what the Explorers have called. And obviously, if we actually look at the various ones as well. So there we go. So um, the Interceptors is called um, a Macarax or something like that. And if we can just find a Battleship version. There we go. It's called the um, Ancro um, Acrocanath or something like that. So interesting names to actually distinguish between the three different types. It is obviously Explorer, Battleship and um, interceptor now what I would definitely recommend as a tactic is definitely following the triangle with these things So obviously normally I'd be using the Newton so I would be going after the Explorers Also another great tactic is and it's stupid enough to even say this for experienced players, but Make sure your shields fully regenerate before you hit the next one because trust me, that will allow you to go that little bit further because then they're not aiming at your shield, uh, crippling your shields, which are still regenerating. So make sure they're fully regenerated before you go after them. Now, uh, we're not going to look at this first set. We're going to look at this second set. And the crew that um, is recommended by Scopely is this one right here. Now, the reason you're going to find it, obviously... It's not looking at Picard's captain's ability. It's looking at his officer's ability predominantly. Increasing isolated cascade damage by, in my case, 5% for three rounds every time you hit a non-Amada hostile. So basically, gone, not a problem. And obviously it hits once per weapon. So the number, so I've got four weapons on the Newton. That's going to give me a total, if all four weapons fire in that round, it's going to give me, you know, four shots. It's going to give me a 20% increase to isolated cascade, which is good. But unfortunately, the firing pattern of the Newton doesn't quite allow for that one. Um, so, but as well, the rewards, um, a 40% increase to rewards. Obviously, with Synergy, it's, oh, hang on, no, sorry, 60% rewards with Synergy brings it up to 100 now, next up is going to be um, Lieutenant Commander Data. And again, it's going down on his officer's ability, increasing isolated cascade damage by 15% against non-Amada hostiles. So again, this is another boost to isolated damage. So now, potentially, 
depending on the round and my firing pattern, that's now 35% isolated cascade. I'm actually dropping against this thing. So now, yes, the, uh, this one I lost to, but we're going to cover that in just a moment. And then obviously, last but not least, is going to be Captain Catherine Janeway. Again, it's going to be her officer's ability we are looking at. At the start of combat, Janeway increases your isolated cascade by 10% against non-player hostiles and amadas. So again, this is going to be hostiles. Gone. So that's another 10%. So potentially there, I'm, I'm now bringing a potential of 45% isolated cascade damage. That's just the officers. Right, that's just the officers. Now, there is one other officer as well, which I haven't got and sourcing for this month. Unfortunately, from what I'm hearing, it's a rare officer. There's no free-to-play path. It's get your wallet out and spend it. And that's going to be Nurse Chapel. So it's going to be this lovely lady here. And it's going to be this particular ability, Below Deck. Yes, a Below Deck ability. At the start of combat, Increasing isolated cascade damage by 5% against non-Amada hostiles. So, fits in perfectly with Picard and Data in the non-Amada hostiles. However, obviously, not it doesn't help Picard's synergy whatsoever. But again, this is a below deck ability we're looking at. So, synergy is not affected by this. But again, it's adding 5%. And when you get it, she's going to be... Straight out of the box, straight below deck, adding that 5%. So now, if if I had her, that is 50% isolated cascade damage. I could potentially drop against these things. Now, obviously, she does have the officer ability, which is increasing the loot dropped from the Gorn Hunters by 25% at tier 1. Obviously, officer ability... It will tear out at uh, um, tier 5 with 200%. So, yes, absolutely. And again, this is making an argument for the next crew, which is the crew I actually predominantly use. <coughs> and this is it. Notice the difference. One officer difference. That's all I've changed. And that is 5 of 11. Because now I'm not focused about isolated damage. Yes, that's all well and good. I'm already pulling with Picard and Data. Um, what, what What did I say? 35% isolated? That's still a fair whack. Okay, now I'm losing 10% because I've not got Janeway there. But I'm using the loot. So I've got 100% off loot off Picard and Data. Adding in the 80% from 5 of 11, that's going to increase the loot by 180%. Now, this is where I say where Nurse Chapel's office ability comes in if you want to use it this way. I wouldn't really recommend it in all honesty, but it is definitely a damn good one. Because when she gets to tier 5, it's 200%. When 5 of 11 gets to um, tier 5, she's only 100%. So that's a massive difference. Nurse Chapel will offer double the loot. So yes, I would consider putting Nurse Chapel on the side on the bridge. But again, I'm not going to benefit from the isolated damage that she can bring. If... I'm prioritizing loot over kills. But then again, kills is rather subjective as well. Because uh, with Nurse Chapel only bringing 5% and Janeway bringing 10%, yeah, re not really much in it. Now, I actually did write down the kills um, for each crew. And you'll be shocked to actually see my results on this one so this was the one with Janeway okay so this is the first run that I did and with Janeway I only killed 13 hostiles 13 hostiles so yeah okay that's all well and good 
Now, I'm going to throw in a curveball here because this is the reason why I don't predominantly run this crew. Now, it's good. No questions about it. It's good. It's fantastic. No gripes. Absolutely. But not everyone's got these. So I will point out another crew that you could potentially use. But that's what I'm actually looking at. 1,846 loot. Now, obviously, this does vary depending on the amount of loot each hostile is dropping. Oh, hang on a minute. No, they all drop the same. They all drop the same. They will have a specific set amount of loot depending on their level. Check that out. Yeah. So I'm hitting the level 49s, and that's a 50 drop loot, if I'm remembering it correctly, because bear in mind, that's in editing. So, yeah, 13 hostiles, 1846 loot. Hmm, okay, not bad. Not bad. So, now we'll go for 5 of 11. Oh, look at that loot. That's actually higher by over 300. Brilliant! Brilliant! That will actually come into a big effect later on in the video. But here's the kicker. This is the same hostile that I attacked with Janeway. Okay, it's the same hostile. I made sure I kept on this hostile. But I was scared I was going to beat it. Sadly, I didn't. I did have actually next to no hole left to actually do it. So, but here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. 12 kills. 12 kills. So effectively, between these two particular crews, I've gone from Janeway with 13 kills to 5 of 11 with 12 kills. So I've saved myself a kill. But you say, oh great, but you still blew up. But it comes down to the loot. The loot. 2,184, one less kill, and I've ended up with over 300 loot more than with Janeway. Okay, so that's it. That, that's where I'm looking at. Now, granted, if you haven't got a tier 4, 5 of 11, this is going to mean nothing to you. It's going to mean diddly bloody squat. So, okay, that's the case then. What are you going to use to actually beat these things? PMT or Pipe Moreau Cath. Okay? If you do not have them, Pipe Moreau. If you have unlocked data, at least data, Pike Moreau data. And again, if you have happened to unlock Nurse Chapel, sling her on. Now, for those of you watching this video after April 2024 and have actually got a yeah, you're going to know the difference already. So, again, Nurse Chapel below deck. But if you have unlocked data at the time of re this recording, Pike Moreau data. If you've not got Picard or Janeway. If you've got Picard, yeah, okay, you can go for the loot. You can go for the extra iso isolytic. But again, the chances are by the time you actually get to play with these hostiles, which I should have mentioned earlier, is Ops 40. You have to be off for to take these on. Now, you can take them on at a lower level. But again, unless you've got the isolytic damage to do, it's not very effective. Ops 40. Uh, de decent tier G3 epic. Okay, G3 epic. Not a specialty ship. Forget them. Faction ship. Because your faction ships are also affected by vast amounts of research, which will increase certain aspects. Okay? But what aspects are they? Well, for that, we're going to have to jump here into the battle log. Now, as you can see, this thing is firing both standard damage and isolytic damage. So, ideally, you want to be looking at some is isolated defense if you can. Uh, you can find that in various forms. I, I will quickly touch on it. Um, but you've got that. But the one thing is, this thing is a greedy bitch. In fact, she's a tight bitch. Because 
If you see here of what I'm throwing, so you've got a 1.5 million and a 1.6 million damage, okay? But if you take a look at the mitigation, well, I'm mitigating all that damage. Ah, okay. But the isolytic damage gets through to the shields and hull. On the um, 80-20 um, alteration, of course. Now, now. This is where I'm on about with weapons damage. It Even though, even though my standard damage is being fully mitigated, my isolytic damage is a percentage of the standard damage. So effectively, if you do this right, you can literally boost, bring as much damage, damage as you can bring to bear. Yes, you're going to lose it all, but your isolytic damage will also benefit from it. It will also benefit from it. So, just another idea, if you wanted to put, say, like, Odo below deck who increases critical damage. So that basically that critical damage going in here, even though it's mitigated on that side, your isolytic still going to benefit from it, isn't it? So, yeah, just an, an idea. Um, also, Mariner Becker increasing weapons damage. Again, it's just weapons damage. Fine, it's all going to piss off in, the, in that side, in the mitigation. It's all going to disappear. But your isolytic will benefit from it. So it will drop it in there. So, yes, the more weapon damage you can bring to bear against this thing makes your isolytic damage against that thing far more effective. Okay? So, there is that. Now, you can use other crews as well. Probably, like, um, Strange New Worlds crew to reduce the shield mitigation, uh, change the shield mitigation facts against these things. The other officers released this month, Sam Kirk and, and Benga, as well. They they mess around with shield mitigation and things like that as well. So, absolutely. Uh, potentially Harrison as well drop sixty percent of its shields in the first attack in the first round. So you're getting more weapon, more isolytic damage against the hull. Yes, I can see it being used, but again, it's probably not going to be one that I would consider. Um, Tal, yes, I could potentially see you using him, but again, I don't think you're going to be hitting as high because the one thing is you're only reliant on isolytic damage. So, now obviously, the standard rounds for me going with this, um, if we just bring up the next battle log, we could because obviously that only went two rounds, obviously, I lost, but just to show you why Tal. Probably would not be very effective. It's only gone three rounds. So Tal's not really going to be effective. Harrison will affect the first round. So you can potentially use them if you want. But to do that, you are sacrificing isolytic damage. So ultimately, yeah, fine. Whatever crews you feel like, if you've not got them... But the more isolated damage you can bring to bear, the better. Okay? Or better yet, the more weapons damage you can do to boost your isolated. So basically, you've got to do a domino effect. Boost one to see the other boost up to kill that thing off. Okay? So that's the way around. That's a one way around it. Obviously, let me know what you found as a very effective in the comment section down below. So that's all that next up is where are we going to find all this extra isolytic crap well sadly it's spread here there and bloody everywhere so let's jump into the r d building and let's start having a look because obviously we're going to start with the research there is a few different types of research that we're going to have <laughs> So, if we just get onto it, put myself back in my corner. So, the first one is going to be your combat tree, and that is going to be. Um, is it the combat tree? Yes, it's the combat tree. 
and it's going to be this one right here. Okay, so dolomite particles needed for this one. There is two levels. It's 2,400 dolomite particles in total, but increasing isolytic damage for all ships, starting at 5% and topping out at 10%. So, yeah, that's an extra whack of um, isolytic damage, and it affects all your ships as well. And it's also a PvE and PvP as well. So, now another one, it's not listed, but a, in fact, no, I'll tell you what, forget that one, because I've just read it. I've just read it, it's players, so absolutely no use, no here. But also as well, any weapons damage that you've got in here as well would be beneficial as well. <clears throat> and the same again with the galaxy and the other trees, any weapons damage would actually be beneficial. Now, the next ones... Sadly, I've not got these unlocked yet because it's actually quite far down the list for me. But these are based off your territory um, expansion. They are going to need the new chronometric particles that we got. Well, that's actually not new anymore. But the new chronometric part particles that we got. And um, I can't bring them any closer to me. But in that batch of nine, it's that middle column. So you've got the Dilak Doch one. And you've got the Baleful Tactics. And you've got Tankalangs. Edge, I probably got that wrongly one wrong. They are faction ship specific, so Aussie, you can tell by the language it's using. Um, Dilak Doch, that's Klingon. I hope I pronounced it right. I'm not very good at Klingon. To me, it sounds like German sometimes, but obviously it's not German. But some of the words that the Germans use, yeah, you you got that. You got to be able to do that thing with your tongue for some of the words. Um. Baleful Tactics is obviously going to be the Federation. And then Tan's Edge is going to be the Romulan. So obviously you've got them. What you're going to get? Well, first of all, you're going to get a 5% boost starting at level 1. But when you actually do get these things eventually maxed out, obviously you're going to be getting that extra 30% um, boost as well. But if we actually saw as well, sadly I need R&D 50 to actually get this. So I'm not going to really... Uh, benefit from this as of yet but again it's going to be more isolytic damage as well so that that's your research yeah that's it nice and easy with the research but again like I say any weapons damage research that you can do is also going to be beneficial now your next one in here is going to be the fleet commander sloan the most recent um, fleet, fleet commander that we had added to the game back um, in december i think it was december and obviously in his skill tree, you're going to be looking in Tactician for, uh, where was you again? Um, this one here, Isolytic Damage for All Ships. Now obviously this is when he's on duty, so he needs to be in the seat for this to take effect. But again, it's starting off at a measly 0.5%. But let's not knock it, right? 0.5% of a million is still quite a fair whack of damage. Um, isolated damage um, then obviously when you top him out of 15 is only going to be um, 10 percent so yeah okay fair dudes a lot to do with him me i'm not even actively working on sloan at the minute because wave defense is just an extra loop in the game that really realistically at the minute i haven't got time to do sometimes i have but vast majority of the time i'm not online when most of the alliance is doing it and when i am online they're all busy doing other stuff for me to drag out Four extra players. And realistically, I don't want to rely on others from other alliances because in the last wave defense that I was in, we had one from another alliance. He's stronger than me, but yet he kept going after the bloody surveys when I could no longer take on the faction ships. So I was, swi I was switching surveys. His ships were like twice as strong as mine. And I just thought, Why? You're a higher ops level than me, and you're going for surveys. Your, your ships are twice as strong. But anyway, I'm not going to get into the arguments on that one. So, obviously, you've got um, Fleet Commander Sloan as well. <clears throat> and again, any weapons damage from the other ones as well would also be beneficial. I mean, you've got Captain Kirk, who's going to give you some basic... Uh, I think he's got some basic weapon ones as well on Explorers. So, the Explorers getting a little bit of love from that as well. Obviously, primarily your op operations as well, giving you that piddly little 
percentage of weapons damage but again it's weapons damage which will eventually translate into isolytic damage so just bear that in mind so keep that um think about that and then of course the new building released this month isolytic damage bonus now mine's starting at three percent and if we actually go into details uh, you can see uh, just opening the building is going to give you a 0.5% increase to your isolytic damage. And that affects all ships. That will affect all your ships. So, obviously me being a level 6 gives me that 3% bonus. And it's just basically, going to, by the looking of this, it's just going to increase by 0.5% as you go through. Um, I'm sure by the time it gets to a certain point, it's going to change to... Level 20. No, it is still going up by 0.5% each time. So there's another one. But guess what? That wasn't even added into the list. No, it wasn't. But what was added into this was another piece of research that I actually forgot to show you. And if you haven't been screaming that piece of research, then yeah. So it's in the Starships tree. And if you scroll all the way across to the Monovine, you're going to be looking for this one, which is the Tachyon hostile eruption increasing base isolytic damage for faction ships while fighting hostiles or a martyr targets now obviously i'm at level four so i've got a 2.5 percent increase and then when this it starts at one percent for level one and obviously topping out at 15 at 10 percent now as well do not worry i'm not going to go through all these numbers as well with the next batch because obviously there is quite a lot to go through with them so that's all them so that's all your isolating from the research and the war room but obviously it doesn't stop there there is more and more and more yes it is artifacts if you watch the video you know what artifacts i'm about to come and tell you so let's jump into it so the first one is going to be the first green um the first green ones across the top there. So you've got the Vidin Organ Harvester, the Plater to Khan, and Captain's Protons Blaster. Now, read the descriptions carefully when you do these, because these are specific to the class of ship you're going after. So the Organ Harvester is going to be for battleships with burning. So for this instance, with me, I ran Neelix below deck. Gives me my burning. No problem. Blader to Con, that's interceptors with hull breach. So that's going to be Bologna Torres below deck. Yes, I'm throwing crew op IDs in with this. And then Captain Proton's Blaster, that's going to be an explorer with Harry Kim below deck. So just, just to bring them up. Next up is going to be Picard's uh, Reskin Flute, which is increasing isolated damage for the first three rounds against hostiles. So you just you saw earlier. How many rounds did I go against that hostile? Three rounds. Guess what? I've got that boot, that 5.5% uh, increase already. Now, I also mentioned isolytic defense. Um, so far, I've not actually spotted any, but it was a Brian Starboard that reminded me of the isolytic defense. But obviously, that's against place, and that's no use in the ornament here. Um, however, Dual generators across the far side. That was a big push in between the arcs. Wonder why? Because of what it does. Increasing isolytic defense for all ships. So, absolutely, that's one you're going to be looking at. Like I said, I'm not going to cover all the percentages on these. You can see what I'm currently have. And obviously, you'll be able to jump into the game and actually look yourself about what, what they are. Um, next one is, um, do, 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 boom, um, da, 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 da. right, yep, is, if we can find it, is we've got Mbenga's Crown, um, I'm just looking at some of these other ones, see if there's anything that I can actually throw in. As an extra, but no. So we've got this one here, the Borg Queen's Remnants, increasing isolated damage for all ships. 
Now, for me, I haven't got that unlocked yet, so pish posh, no good for me. Now, as well, I'm going to throw these in as well, which is Guinan's Magnus 3 weapon and Kirk's phaser rifle, increasing energy weapon damage and kinetic weapon damage respectively for all ships. Again, what have I been saying? That's increasing your basic damage, your standard damage, which will translate into isolytic damage. So, yeah. Definitely worth going after. But again, you're going to have to do formation of madders to do that. And find the specific ones. Um, there we go. Embenga's crown. Increasing isolated damage against explorers. Catatan telescope. Increasing isolated damage against explorers. Riker's trombone. Increasing isolated damage against battleships. Again, another three I've not actually got unlocked yet. But, yeah, throwing extra isolytic damage. This is all about isolytic. Literally isolytic. I'm sure when it was originally um, brought in, that's what they decided. And then as well, you've got um, the this Oath Coin, Cisco's Baseball, and the Tyrion Speeder, which increases isolytic defense against those specific ships. And if you look, obviously, the defense is a lot better percentage-wise than the actual increase. So you've got them. Now, obviously, base shield health, you don't need to worry about. And that's it. That's all the artifacts in there. Now, let's have a look. Um, yep, I've actually written in capital letters, don't forget your isolated defense too. So this is the one thing that has that, to be honest, I never even saw the other content creators push. Now, I don't know if Lube did, because I haven't watched this video yet, but I mentioned in isolated defense. Because it's something that's going to be so big to your game as well against these hostiles. Considering that they actually throw standard damage and isolytic damage. Well, you might as well try and reduce one of them, if anything. Alright? That's my opinion. Now, obviously I've been through the battle logs and I've showed you the loot chart. The next bit is what are you going to do with all that loot that you gain? Now, for me, these gun are literally the very definition... Of a five minute loop. So what you're going to do. Is bring, come here. In the isomatter. Um, refinery. Click on this. 290. So basically. I only need to get. 300 loot. To pull one of these chests. Right. That's two kills. That's two kills for me. That's it. But if I want to do all three, I'm going to need about 900. Okay, so now we trebled it. That's six kills. But I got 12 kills, didn't I? Well, yeah. Because I like, on this, even though it's not very cost effective, I like to do the two chest pull because the pulls are not very good. So the, they are actually ridiculous. And if we actually look at this, you're going to get one officer. One officer. you got a 70% chance of a rare, 30% chance of an epic. So, and in here, you have the full crew of Enterprise E and Voyager. Yes, full sets. Maximum number of shards you can get is five. Lowest will be one. But again, you can only pull one. So, ideally for this particular chest, if you can do it, Go for the two chest all the time. So here we go. We're going to get. That's one of the shit, shittest pulls yet. I've had. One Troy. One Torres. Now Torres. Brilliant. Yeah. Troy. Yeah. But the fact it's a single shard. That shows you how shit a pull that was. So. Yeah. It is what it is. Now obviously if you want to go further and do the other chest. Again you're still going to need to pull it. You saw how much loot I got in that one run. With 5 of 11. I got 2,184. So that's going to allow me to do at least two of these. On the two chest pull. Or all three. Not a problem. And I've still got 1,100 left over. Okay. But again, I like to do it. So I will do two runs. 
not a problem. And it's going to get me a back stock of the violated item matches what they drop. So again, in this one, you're going to get one artifact, and it's split. But and you've actually got a decent chance of getting a rare one. Uh, uncommon and epics both top out at 15% each. So let's go for the two chest pull and see what we get. So we've got two, three towards Mbenga's crown, and I've also got uh, the bat left from the House of Martok, which increases uh, your base damage for all ships against players. Now, is this a decent um, replacement for um, Formation of Marders? No, it's not. Was the other one a great replacement for the Voyager crew? No, it's not. In all honesty, right, these are not decent chests, but again, it's something to help the loop. And it's a bloody easy loop. Grind, refinery, jobs are good one. Five minutes. If you really want to cut it down that low. Five minutes. So, now, obviously, you can dispute the five minutes with me. I've got, I don't have a problem. If it's taking you longer than five minutes, I'm sorry. I truly am sorry the fact I've said five minutes. But for me, it's five minutes. And like I say, I'm using a loot crew. Now, this chest actually has a little bit more value. Because one, you're going to get a pull of the credits, a pull of the materials, some officer or ship XP, and some speed ups. And to be perfectly honest, right, these speed ups had nothing to shout, nothing to cry about. So if we can just get them both in the screen, the 12 hour, 17 of them, 17. That's eight and a half days. Eight and a half days, right? Five hour speed ups, 42. 42. That's over 200 hours. That's like a week. That's a week. That's over a week. I think it roughly works out about the same as the 12 hours. And then, of course, you've got some, like, uh, hour speed up repairs. Woo! So, um, Officer XP and Ship XP, they're nothing to shout home about, all right? They, they are nothing to shout home about. They are ridiculously small, especially for an Ops 49 player. So, but, again, the materials are still nothing to shout home about. But a better chance of getting some rares is better than the Bajoran store. Well, actually, no, the Bajoran store is still slightly better because you get better, you get higher pulls. But better chance of the pull here. So it's sort of six to one, half a dozen of the other, really. When it comes to these rares, if it's the uncommons you're after, stick with the Bajoran store all day long. Trust me, just stick with the Bajoran store, especially the commons. So. But here we go. So we'll do the two chest pull on this. And so we've got the two hour speed ups. Woo! And we got the tw um, 12 hour speed ups, which is brilliant. We got some XP. And we actually got some officer XP as well. So that's good. And some Klingon and Romulan credits. Brilliant. Can't complain. And that's actually some decent gas 51. Yeah, I'll take that. So is it perfect? Not by a long shot. Not by a long shot. But again, I can't gripe, right? It's, a, it's an easy enough loop. And to be perfectly honest, right, would I recommend that you put this loop in your game? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, even just the little trinkets that you've seen me pull today is still something. Now, I do have a loops video coming out. And I'll just show you the quickly the script I've written so far. So there's... Uh, the light's actually not making it very good, so I'll just turn that light away a minute. So, here we go. So, I've got one page there, one page there, and I've got a little bit on the back of that page. That's the loop so far, and they're just specialty ships. God, you're going to love that video when it comes out, yeah? And also, I'm working on the Vidar and Talios video as well, because I thought that could do with some love and some attention, because there was a question actually asked... Or something mentioned in the vid in the comments, which I felt is worth going over in a fresh new video for the Vidal and Talios. So, did the upcoming videos that I've got. I've got to get them recorded yet. Then I've obviously got to edit them. So, keep your eyes out for them. They are coming. 
But if there is any videos that you do want me to do, then please um, drop it in the Discord. Come along to the Discord, drop it in there, come and have a chat. Uh, not much chatting actually goes on in the Discord. But then again, I'm only a small content small content creator. I don't I'm not like Rev Juice, okay? I'm not like Ultimate DJs. I'm not like Lube. I'm a nobody. Ultimately, I'm a nobody. But yet people still subscribe to me and they still watch my videos. Which is brilliant. But so if you do like this video, please smash that like button. And also don't forget to consider subscribing to the channel if you have not, if you are a new viewer to the channel. And if you want to come and play Star Trek Fleet Command, by all means, come along. It is a good game. It's a lot changed over five years. So, who knows? Maybe this is something you could get yourself into. But as well, there's one thing you will always need to remember about this game. Play it your way. But anyway... That's enough from me today. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? You know what? The usual routine. Down in the comments. I love to read them. Until then. I'm Admiral Pegasus. Thank you for joining me on the Pegasus Show. This has been Gorn Hostiles. <laughs> yeah. An interesting set. Stay safe, live long and prosper. And I shall catch you on the next one. Goodbye.